How is your prayer life? If you are like most of us, it has seasons and sometimes lacks consistency. Prayer, faith, and holiness are key to reaching your destiny. Join Prophet Nana Seyopuku Sakodie as he encourages the body of Christ to get closer to God in prayer. anything for your destruction they would attract the judgment of God on this mountain Prophet Nanase Pukusakode is an end time seasoned firebrand prophet and an evangelist with a unique preaching ministry anchored on prayer he teaches and prophesies the word of God with signs and wonders everything that belongs to you may the Lord gather you from the west gather you from the east gather you from the south gather you from the north may you stay in the center of your way Without any shadow of doubt, believe that the Almighty God has been good to us. It's been a week of strong impartation. You will see the effect after this one. Hallelujah. But Better is the end of the matter than the beginning thereof. So I'd like you to be very, very spiritually elect. Because something is about to fall on you that you will not be in hurry to forget. I told you yesterday, everybody God called in the Bible that will make meaning, he promised them land. In John chapter 3, verse number 27, John says, A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from above. So if it's not given to you from above, it has no future. Whatever you receive, if it is not given from above, it has no future. Only what God gives can last. Did you hear what I said? Yesterday I said, after we were standing on international land, I saw people coming who has no house to go. They also secure their portion. Today you secure a portion on this land. Uh Hallelujah. Amen. Because the contentions of land started from Abraham's time. And the people strove with Isaac. Mm. And they took over the world. Mm. So, today, <laughs> after this encounter, anyone that will strive with you on the land, God will deal with them squarely. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. The one that created land, is it not the one that give, can give you a portion? Yeah. <laughs> the Canaanite and the Amalekite and the Jebusite and all the side, they were there. He said, I have taken, he took the land from them and gave it to his allies. He took the land from them because he's the owner of the land. The earth is the Lord and the fullness. Hallelujah. So it's so God having given you a portion, he has struggled for nothing. You won't get it. Hallelujah. I told you somebody went to abroad and came back after 25 years with a one bag of rice. Brought his own. They arrest, mistakenly arrested somebody, arrested him in the supermarket. He came with one bag of rice. An uncle. One bag of rice after 25 years. He said, except the Lord build, not that they will labor, they will labor. This morning, God will build it for you. Except the Lord build, they that labor, I will.
wish they would labor. They were laboring. They come to sleep 12 midnight. They wake up 4 a.m. They are still owing. Except they are not built. Look at somebody and say, today, you today. must be spiritually aggressive. Spiritually aggressive. <laughs> Any portion of this land that belongs to you in Ghana, yeah, you shall not be denied of that land. Amen. Your army doesn't look like you are ready for the company. You will need an office. You will need your school. You will need your factory. You will need whatever you are looking for. It must be granted to you. Hallelujah. Very, very crucial. Today, when you take a pen, you are sending, you feel the anointing. Yeah. Hmm. Do you know the reason why we have to get aggressive on this one? It's going to be something. You see, all kinds of things are coming to Ghana. All kinds of things. There are other people coming with their goals. It's very, it's very, you have to be spiritually you, have, you must be spiritually alert to understand what I'm talking about if Indians come they come with their gods if Chinese come they come with their Buddha the most important thing is that when they come they must not get a land to plant the gods <laughs> so today somebody here you are taking possession of your portion amen <laughs> From the upper west to upper east to northern region to the don't tell me there are no there are plenty lands. But God has to give it to you. That's it. This is the introduction. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse number 24. A very interesting scripture. It's one of the most interesting scriptures anytime I read. It's a scripture that takes you to warfare. God say, Arise ye up. Take up your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto thy hand Sion, the, Amor the Amorite, the king Hezbon, and his what? Land. He said, the, the land belonged to what? Anon. It belonged to what? Uh, Sion and the Amorite, kings of Hezbon. He said, I have done what? I have given to you their land. Somebody was saying, there, God said, I have taken it, I have given it to you for it so we are not talking about the fact that nobody is occupying some land the land that belongs to people are already there but this morning God will move them so that you take over Amen. because God can give it to you huh? that's what he said rise here take up your journey rise here take up your journey so when you take your portion on this one nobody can from upper east to greater Accra except you don't want it Somebody said something humorously. He said that when God Abraham, as far as you can see, I've given it to you. Abraham, he said he wished Abraham had, has helicopter. Because I could have, as far as you could see, that's why. Because Abraham didn't have anything, he stood and then, that is why the Israel land is very small. So today you need your spiritual eyes to get it. Do you know the reason why we are contending for this one? Look at what God said in the same chapter. He said that. Kings of Sheba and Islam begin to possess it. Contend with him in battle. If God has given a gift, you can't go and take it and eat it. But it's a battle to fight. Battle to fight. That's why you are here. Some of you are standing here. There is already an altar in your family that, that refuse to allow you to own a land. It's an altar. It must be broken today. <laughs> now listen. Some people here. For this prophetic action, they will never own a property. Because where you come from, there is a spiritual embargo on what you must own. You can write, but you must not have your own. Don't play games with it. Hallelujah. When I was praying, I saw something. There are some people, eh, the altar in their family will let them take care of their sister's children, but not their own children. I saw it. It was very clear. There are people when they marry, they will take care of their family, their uncle, uncles, and aunties and children, but not their own children. They will take care of their sisters more than their wives. It's not a hero, it's order. 
you are dealing with very crucial things. Today you must be free. Permanent. You have to be free. Because when the service has set you free, you shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. And the violent take it to our by force. And the violent take it to our by force. Arise here, take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto the hand Sion, the Amalite, the kids of Hezbollah, and his land. Begin, begin, begin to possess it this morning. Contend with them in battle. Contend with them in battle. Contend with them. Do you know what I know that the spirits can deny you? Hmm. A man of God told me something. He said, many years ago, one of the guard chief came to him and said that the East Legon and the airport residential land for a minor. He said, buy. He said, who like this? Bush? He didn't buy. After 10 years, he went to buy a plot of land for $100,000. And they were giving him 100 acres. So, the thing is not that is Bushu. There is an altar in your family that doesn't allow you to buy land. Today, you have to be free. You stand there and look at my face. Hallelujah. You have to be free. If the devil can deny you a land in Ghana, how are you going to get it in America? So it must start from here. Some of you in your lifetime, you own 500 acres of land. It will be there fast. You don't know what to do with it. God promised them land. He said, where the source of your fish are tread upon, I've given it to you as a possession. So what we are going to do, is not a matter of you going to look for land. God is going to give it to you. Amen. I said, the almighty God is going to give it to you. Amen. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from above. Today, somebody will append his signature and sign his portion. Amen. And God will a portion for you from upper west upper east to greater Accra. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you imagine you alone every region you own 100 acres of land? Ah. 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 Every region. Every region. Upper east 100 acres. Upper west 100 acres. Northern region 100 acres. Asante region 200 acres. Yeah. Get that crap, 500 acres, and you have it. How many are receiving this prophetic word now? Receive it. I told you this house, you have no, you have, you have no covenant with poverty. No, no, we have no covenant. If you come here, you have poverty mentality, you can't fit. We have no covenant with poverty. The Lord told me in audible voice, he said, when the kingdom is going, it will be difficult for anybody to serve me in poverty. That's where we are going. You will be a liar. Poverty can let you court for eight years. You'll be courting with a woman and get degree inside. But doctrine degree in courtship. Not because you don't want to marry, the pocket is empty. Because you don't marry with tongues. Nobody buy wedding gown with tongues. Walk to some of the wedding and see whether they will give you one. That's a work. One of the greatest things Solomon said is that money has answers all things. That thing is applicable in the natural. So the way faith answers all things in the spirit, money answers all things in the natural. Mm. Today you must prosper. You must get a portion of the land. Can you imagine half of us here have hundred million dollars in their bank account? By our nest all night, may your bank account change. Amen. For you. I hate poverty with passion because uh. I saw people sick in the hospital. They were looking for 1,500 to do a surgery and the people lost their life. That was something happened that made me hate poverty with my intestine. If you love it, I tell you, God can use you. If you have poverty mentality, you limit God's hand on your life. Nobody in the Bible God called and they were broke. Hmm. Give me Genesis chapter 12. Let me see how short when God gives you a prophetic word and 
the distance at which he prospers with. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. Look at this. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of your country from thy kingdom and from thy father's house unto where? Unto where? Not a house, unto where? Have you seen that God he didn't give people houses? He gave them what? Because once you have the land, it is easy for you to get the house. Unto a land that I will show you. And listen to what he said in verse number two. Oh, what I'm promising God. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you. And I will make your name great. And thou shalt be what? A blessing. This is the question I want to ask you this morning. How do you become a blessing when you are not blessed? The condition for the Abrahamic blessing is that I will bless you so that you become what? A blessing. It is not that with three more deal, you are broke. Today your story must change. You see, your wife believes you, you, you are not a lover. It's not a lover. You are a broker. Because women are created such a way. How can a woman say you love? If you say you love a woman, use your mouth to love without buying it. How would they know? Think about it. You have fancy celebrating his birthday. He came to tell you, say, No, let me pray for you. When did you receive a prophetic anointing to pray for people? <laughs> and today is my birthday, so bring oil. Now, that is Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 1. Look at Genesis chapter 13 verse 1. In the distance of one chapter, God promised Abraham by chapter 13, and Abraham went out of Egypt, and he and his wife and all that he had, and Lord with him in the sun. Listen, verse number 2, watch this. And Abraham was very rich. Within the distance of one chapter, between chapter 12, God promised him. Chapter 13, very rich. So next year by this time, I have already put in a prophetic word so you can receive it or take it. I said, in the distance of a chapter, God promised chapter 12 by chapter 13, and the man was very rich. Chapter 12, the promise has come by chapter 13. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, in gold. That is from dollars to Ghana cities. The man was just swimming in it. May you receive it the of the Abrahamic blessing. Crucial. Today I bend your signature with aggressive faith, with a violent faith. Hallelujah. The prayer city God wants to build. It's not this one. No. I told you the one I saw, it has a runway. This one. I said it before. I said it has a tram. Do you remember I told you it has a train and a tram? I told you years ago. I saw it. I said, Trump. People were dropping and sitting in a train and a tram and they were coming to where they are. They are not there yet. <laughs> ha! It is dangerous not to dream again. <laughs> when the God told me, say, when I call you as a prophet and you think you have, you have arrived, I kill you. It's a dangerous one. Once you relax and say you have arrived, I take you off. If you start complaining, I kill you. I'm the only prophet left. You say you are dying. Go and anoint Elijah. Go back. Everything God has given you in the kingdom to do, know that he has a substitute. Amen. Don't do it and think it that it's a right, it's a privilege. Amen. That thing God told me to never depart from me, girl. Anybody, whether you are serving around or anything, that is why I don't worry about who is doing something and misbehaving. God will take you over. He told Israel, He said, I will provoke you to jealousy by a nation you don't respect. So the people you are despising, I will elevate them above you. And you'll be sitting there. It is dangerous to walk with God with complaints. 
Never think it's a, a right for what you are doing. And never think that if you are not there, nobody can do it. Ha! Ah. Ah. Look at some of the dangerous situations. Jesus says, Triumphant entry. This is the Son of God. Oh, son of the King is coming. The Pharisees say, Tell your disciples to shut up. He said, If they shut up, the stones will cry. Ah. Which means that stones can take human beings' job. Yeah. If you stop worshiping God, the stones will lift up their hands. He said, he said what you are doing is a privilege. The stones can crack. You see, if you like, let them keep going, you see stones worshiping. Would, wouldn't that be frightening? Putting their garment there, the, the donkey was passing on it. They said, let them, he said, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry. <laughs> so it is not a right, it's a privilege. Sweeping the church is a privilege. Every calling of God is high calling, including shooting a video. If this girl will not stand in the video, somebody will not listen to this message. Hello? Every calling of God is a high calling. Every calling of God is what? It's a high calling. Sweeping the church is a high calling. Sweeping the church. Somebody was in the church always fasting and praying. Anna, he was the first woman to lift up baby Jesus and professor. Simon suspended death until he see the consolation of Israel. It's today that people think that your call is to stand in the pulpit and preach. No. It's not. The Lord will wipe up poverty from this family for good. Yeah. Hallelujah. The ground will be full of wheat. Today, come and bend your signature with passion. Write it with passion. Prophetic action doesn't make sense. We are not making sense here. We are making faith. Yeah. Oh, all the, listen, all the sensible people, by the time you come, the faith people have taken off. Yeah. One man of God said something. He said that, show me the things motivational preachers has accomplished in comparison to what faith is accomplishing. Put it together. Mm -hmm. That was a very strong one. Hallelujah. All the people building by faith, there is no limit. I have seen things like that. I'm telling you. If you go to get a couple of city of faith, it, there is a runway there. Huh? Go to redeem Christian camp. It's a, it's a republic within a country. Yes. Go to uh, Kenna, Kenna land. It's another thing. Go to Porter City. You, you will run away. Yeah! Faith. This building you are standing, it was built in three months. Some of you were here. We were three months it was there. Everything here is one year, two, one year, two months. Faith. The lifestyle of faith. Now listen. If your God can do this with you one year, how can he do with you 40 years? Think about it. Now that you are, you are not going to prosper, now that you are struggling, if he can do this with you. <laughs> By the time, from now to 40 years, where will you be? Mm. Some of you that are hearing the words I'm declaring, which is a sea. From now, the people that are beginning to envy you, they will die on the way quick. <laughs> Tell them that I've not even started though. Now that you are envious, what is going to happen? Can you imagine you bought Mundai Atos? And somebody is so jealous he can't handle. The day you get Rolls Royce, what is going to happen to them? You collapse. Straight. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You collapse. Amen. Who say poverty is good? There were people supposed to be invested, they couldn't go. The most intelligent people are not the ones in school. Hallelujah. Huh? Now we are even producing doctors who are not supposed to be doctors. Because you can buy the medical course. If your father is rich. He just walked to a chancellor university. My son is supposed to do dontology, but let him do medicine. Finish and cutting people's ears and putting it in their nose. And killing them. Hallelujah. The first time we then the most intelligent people, the one doing the medicine, you go and go to school. Our grades are not the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you, even if God tell you to be the mass itself, you still get F2. So, 
That is what. My mathematics teacher told me I'm wasting my time in the school. I have to go and read. A man came to class one day with a cat class. Say it's for me. And I should go and read. You are wasting your time. You don't know my I'm not a mathematician. Give me a microphone and do your mathematics and let's see what happens. Today I was checking the things that brought poverty. It is not to discover the gift of God on your life. Because a man gives to make room for him. Bring him before great men. Gift. Hallelujah. You will not be broke. <laughs> I saw myself dedicating 20 story building offices. Amen. I saw myself. I don't know what. I saw myself dedicating ships and aircrafts. The Lord said, Come out of your bedroom. I went there. He said, Walk there with your trust. You. Where are we going? Towards the beach. He said, All oh, these safes belong to them dedicated. Yes, Can I tell you this? God will use you to advertise Himself. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, Because of me, they praise God. When I see some people and where they begin, where they started from, how far the Lord has brought them, this is the conclusion. If it is God, then it can be done everywhere. Give the Lord a shout if you are there. I said, if it is God, then it can be duplicated everywhere. Unless the thing is not from God. But if it is from the Lord, he can do it everywhere at every time. That is the thing about God. Hmm. If somebody started serving God with a moto, Okada, and now has five aircraft, that is God. It means he can do it everywhere. Are you getting what I'm talking about? If it is God, it can be done everywhere. I don't like you to come here religiously because God is doing something prophetically. Can I read to you Joel chapter 2? Prophetically. Somebody say prophetically. prophetically. Give me verse number 15. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Go to the next verse. Yeah. What a verse. That's one of my favorites. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assembly the elders. Is that what we are doing this week? Gather the children. And those that suck the breast must even come to all night. It is better to suck your mother's breast in all night than in this content. I'll finish. Hallelujah. God watch all kinds of things. And suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. The bridegroom was supposed to be on honeymoon. He must come to all night. God is demanding something. It's time for everything. This is the time to kiss your, your fiancé. Come to all night. It's a demand. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. The bridegroom is in chamber waiting for the bride because all of them should come out. I married Lady Ivy. There was no honeymoon. There's no time. The time to honeymoon was I have to go and fast. Going to God for fasting to get a pattern for marriage and going for three days. Which one do you like? So it was two things to choose. A lifetime honeymoon and three days off. Choose one. We are having a lifetime honeymoon. There's no struggle about anything. Hallelujah. Everybody is in slain serving the Lord. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Let the bridegroom come out of his chamber. A scripture move me. Eh? Those scriptures sometimes carry me from my bedroom, leave my family to go and fast. He said, Woe unto them that at ease in Zion. So if you are in Zion, you are convenient Christian, you pray the time you want, the time you want, you don't come to church. The Bible says, Woe unto you if you are at ease in Zion. And when God says, Woe unto you, you are in trouble. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assembly the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go out of his chamber, and the bride out of his closet. Go to the next verse. Wow. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people. 
spare thy people. Oh Lord, oh Lord, spare thy people, oh Lord, and give not thy heritage to a reproach. So if you don't pray, we'll be a reproach. Give not thy heritage to a reproach that the hidden should rule over them. That Indians will come and buy land and we don't have one. That Chinese people will take over pots and the altar and let them say, spare that people, oh Lord, and give them the heritage to a reproach. That the hidden should rule over them. The hidden should rule over them. Listen to this demon in Ghana. Listen to this demon that celebrate the prosperity of the foreigner but not the yeah. indigenous people in Ghana. Yes, sir. You don't understand. Yes, sir. As for God, God deserves the supper. And God deserves the leftover. God forbid. Is it not a sad thing? He wrote it. As for God, He deserves the supper. He doesn't deserve anything better. This is not what we are looking Those of you who are angry. This is not what we are coming to. I say you will see people land their aircraft and come to church. You see? We have the scriptures in our belly. The, the word of the Lord is there. This is a prophetic gathering. We have the word of the Lord in our belly. Don't play games with it. If you are not ready to walk in that greatness, God will cut you off. Yeah. Mm, because where we are going, it is for great people. <laughs> Hallelujah. How long we will sit in a church with a bench? Now when somebody is sitting one, they say, Trust you, now somebody wake up, become a roller coaster for another person. What is that? One day God got angry with the generation and told them that you are living in a godly house and my house is lying desolate. I have cursed your blessing. How can you think that your bedroom should be nicer than God's house? Hallelujah. You must be very aggressive. And not sit there with poverty mentality. One of the first signs of prosperity is that when you see blessings, celebrate it. Yeah. If you step out of envyness and jealousy and you start celebrating greatness, you will surely become great. Nobody can stop you. Despite not the years of small beginnings, allow God to build it from one stage. Life is in faces, men are in sizes. Faces. We are not going to look at one person who has a factory and say that when am I going to start one? No. Everybody great it used to be small. Face it. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? With a genuine heart. Genuine hearts. If there's one problem with us in Ghana, it's wrong hearts. Wrong. A, a wrong heart can cut off you your blessing for life. He said, Ah, for my servant Caleb and Joshua, they have another heart. And that's why they will see the land. Go look at the inside. Develop a genuine heart. Nobody must come down for you to rise. It's not the principle of blessing. I am the only one who can tell you this. Genuine heart. Do you know why the white people don't pray long but they get blessing? They have a sincere heart. I saw it on the left, even they lock their cart. We give leftover to our cart. After you finish, you are going to draw bones away. Then we give it to the cart. Don't do that. I saw one white man sell cat to go and do surgery for a cat. If he can love a cat like that, if he becomes his husband, how will he love you? We, we don't even love ourselves, so we can't even love somebody. The first principle is that we can, if you say you love your neighbor as yourself, if you hate yourself, how will you love me? So we are married, people don't love themselves, and that is the problem. If somebody here doesn't love himself, he cannot love you. It's not possible. Wrong heart should be out of this. If you come and pen signature for what you can get, 
to prove that you have arrived is a wrong heart. Lord, why do I want to get a land and prosper that I can find the cause of your kingdom? Amen. Then God has found a good person. Yes. The purpose of the kingdom prosperity is to advance his kingdom. If your prosperity is not to advance God's kingdom, you are wasting your time. To be cut off one day. Didn't I read it to you, girl? He said, Abraham, I will bless you that you will become a blessing. He went to fight the five kings and get booty. The next Abraham was doing that. He was looking for a priest to give time. He found Melchizedek and gave his 10%. Jacob has not prospered yet. He said, Lord, if you can take me to my uncle's house and bring me back, then shall you be my God. Everything you give me, I give you 10%. Wrong hearts is the problem of Africa. Jealousy in 97 degree sessions. It's very high. Jealousy. Enviness. Some people can comment on things that they've forgotten that is human. If you come to this potter city and you comment on something, thinking it's for me, you have attracted God's anger. This thing is bigger than me. You go to see. Don't see me wet trust you here like a mason. Oh, this is God in action. It is God's plan. This thing, God has planned it before the foundation of the earth. So if you are looking at me to misbehave, God will come after you. I seek the face of God. I do what I hear from God. And I leave it. If you don't have a heart for it, progress. And you wish I wanted something bad that's happening. God will return it back to you. Because God has an agenda for his people. I'm teaching you the right heart. Because for us to prosper, we must have the right heart. And we must celebrate greatness. Don't criticize a young girl's nice car at the car park when we're looking for one. Uh, where did he get the money? Where did he get the money to get this car? He stole it. Did you arrest here? Do you know the reason why you are still walking? You are criticizing other people who has things that you are looking for. And God will shut it from coming to you. I am the one that opens and no man can shut. So he can shut it and no man can open. That is the God we said. Do you know why? Do you know why I can never be poor? I have always celebrated people who are great and blessed them with my heart. <laughs> A genuine heart to possess your possession. Put your hand in your heart and say, Oh Lord, oh, Lord. change my heart. He said, Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see the Lord. There was a Jewish rabbi that was fasting for 40 days and 40 days. He said, what the people say for purity of heart? He said, why? He said, I want to see the Lord. Amen. That was the main purpose of his fasting. The blessings of God is not automatic. They have conditions. Dangerous. A good heart. It is, not, it is, it is nonsense for us to step uh, right on this one with a wrong heart. We need a good heart. The word of God sometimes is for rebuke. And if you are going to be blessed in the kingdom, our heart must change. Amen. Because our heart must change. Amen. Our heart must completely change. After this meeting, every witch that you in your family must flee from the family. Yeah. Do you know the way the Christian people business are suffering? Because you are just a threat. When you go to the shop, all of them went to India to get you to do a sprinkle it in front of their shop. Everything they put there will return back to them after this meeting. Somebody say, Lord, give me a good heart. We need it. Well, we need it. We need it to be blessed in the kingdom. We need it to advance the course of other people's blessing. Hallelujah. We need it. A genuine heart is very crucial because God looks at the inward. He said, man, look at the outward, but I check the inside. When 
uh, the prophet Samuel almost wrong, anointed the wrong king. He said that I have rejected all of them. Even though the father didn't call David, these, are, these guys are not the one I've chosen. Is that all your sons have forgotten one is in the bush? Bring him. He said, look at the word, the English word they use. He said, go and fetch him. David was so rejected that he was fetching like a water. He said, we are not sitting down. Fetch him and bring him to me. They fetched the boy and brought him. Two, that way was used for two people. Mephibosheth to have to be fetched. If, if they are fetching you today, you will be a king tomorrow. That is the... Some of you guys pray, yo, yo, yo. If you change your heart, you get a husband. Yeah. Good ass. Every man is afraid to marry a caricature man. Woman. Change your heart. You will marry a bishop. Me, I'm not even a reverend yet. Too. Can you imagine you get a bishop? You are gone. A man is coming with a small stick and then a portfolio. May you not be ordained as a bishop of food. Because she said, Is it because of financial burden that you can't grow fat? <laughs> financial burden. <laughs> I told one man of God something and said that people are suffering because of your overeating. Say most of the people in your congregation, if you can stay in the God presence for 14 days, their destinies will change. The devil won't kill them. When the blind leads a blind, now they go. Hmm. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Give me the verse. Let me finish it up. And give not the heritage to a reproach if you don't pray that the hidden should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people where is their God? Give me verse number 23 to 29 and let me close. Somebody say Amen. Amen. I don't know where this message is coming from but it may be good for somebody. After every visitation comes temptation. So when God visits people like this, give them a message that they will have shock absorbers and not go and fool around. When you have a major encounter, Satan is waiting for you. We have to warn you so that you don't get a wrong heart. Be glad ye, children of Zion. He's talking about the potter city. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And you cause to come for the rain. The former rain and the latter rain. In the first month. So by January you'll be a high flyer. <laughs> Professor Aina. In the first month. In the first month. Hallelujah. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fast shall overflow with wine and oil. This is the aftermath effect of this particular all night. The floor shall be full of feet. And I will restore to you the years. Not the days, not the months, not the week. I will restore to you the years that the cockroach is eating. And the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmerworm. My great army. And I will restore. And I will restore unto you. Amen. Is anybody here that has lost something? Restoration is coming. Amen. One day I was preaching in a church in Ghana, a big church, and I said, anybody that has a land with a contention come, 70% of the people came. I was shocked. And the Lord said, I want to show you how the enemy is fighting the blessings of the children of God. Can I tell you this? I can tell you, especially those of you standing, listen. The devil fears your prosperity than your prayer. Now stand up and lift up your two hands. I can end with this. What did I say? Satan fears what? Somebody says, spoke inside. Because you can pray amiss, but you cannot give amiss. I didn't show hell is shaking. 
Because the devil never thought that one day you have this prophetic encounter. He fears. When the people were going around the Jericho wall, they didn't understand, but Satan knows that the thing he shut up is about to be opened. Jericho was strictly shut up. What is the purpose? Without Jericho, you can't get to the promised land. Because Jericho is the point you must cross to get to the promised land. The rest is sea and mountains. And because Jericho is the way you must go, the city is shut up because of you. So some of you, the enemy has shut up something because of you. Today, it will come down. That is why I am warning you to get a good heart. Probably that's what I'm telling them. Jericho was straightly shut up, not go out and not come in because of the children of Israel. So all the attack you see in your family, you are the target. When I lay hands on you, we are not joking. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Don't play games. All the attack, all the setback, all the limitations, you are the target. I'm telling you. The laws were made because of your birth. Before Moses was born, then let every male child be killed. Because somebody is about to be born in the vertical tides. That will be a deliverer. So let me put the Lord there before you are born. So the devil has made a law today that God will defy that law. <laughs> So all the centers of the path is because of you. Nyamiwamu of Pentokwa. Say I kill and I make alive. He called himself a man of war. Pentokwa. It is what time for bar he gets excited. He said, for this purpose, tell Pharaoh that I have raised him, that I would deal with him. You will let my people go. You will let my firstborn go. I will kill your firstborn. Did they kill them? God is about to step on your enemies. The one that says you will have children, God will visit them today. The one that says you will take your position, God will visit them today. Hey, are you imagining the potiphar that put yourself in prison and give him a standing ovation? God can tend the tables. This is often said. It's only on the throne will that be greater than you. According to your words, Egypt be ruled. They removed the symbol of authority and gave it to Joseph. In the midst of the cabinet. The potiphar that put Joseph in prison. Now when Joseph is kept for cabinet meeting, they say, let's wake up the prime minister. And everybody stands. Anytime I read the story of Joseph, the person my heart go for is Potiphar. I said, Lord, you should have written a lot about this guy. When this man came to power, he should have shown us what happened to him. The captain of the guard. He was one of the strategic men in the kingdom. Because when he was super power, your, your, your FBI boss and your national security officer and those who handle the army, the chief of defense staff, they are very crucial. So Potiphar was a very strategic man. Because when there is war, he's the one we call. So he put people in prison without trial. And now God has stepped into the matter. Now listen. Since the world began, only two people have come from prison to become his head of state. First one is Joseph, second one is Mandela. Lord, years in prison, I came back and ruled a country. Power of God can turn the tables. <laughs> Somebody's table is turning. <laughs> I felt it in the spirit. Hey, give the Lord a scream. Yeah. The stone that the builders rejected, it has become the cornerstone. The Lord, the clap and the shout and preach. Hey, hey, Lord Jesus.
the Lord's victory. Yeah. We will all lands in our powers, lands in our eyes, lands in authority, lands in bravo, lands in a center region, lands in voter region, lands in central region.
something is going to happen. There is about to be a major move of the spirits. Major things are going to happen. God is about to move in this end time. The wealth of the sinner is about to be laid down for the righteous. I see a turning point coming. Listen, your weeping will come to an end today. God will turn your captivity around. Amen. The Lord said, some of you, eh, there is a source he's disconnecting you from. That you are holding dear to it. He said, where he's taking you cannot be compared to that little thing that you are holding on to. Are you alive? Are you alive? <laughs> you will see the glory of God. Now people sit down. Now people here will see. And then you don't need to sign all the four of them. You just can come to just one. And because it's the same Ghana man, it's the same thing. I put my signature on the first prophet as a man that God lead to guide you to where you are going. You, you get a, because by a prophet, the Lord delivered them, yes, they brought them out of bondage by a prophet. The prophetic anointing is very crucial when it comes to prosperity and advancement and doing uncommon things it is what God uses he said the New Testament church was established on the ministry of the apostles and the prophets lift up your holy hands can you imagine your family which saw you own airlines they can't handle it <laughs> Some of you, eh? You have employee of labor, two thousand employees in your company. People that eat from your table. I don't think they say yes, can you get? I saw something in the Bible today. Eight hundred prophets were eating from Jezebel's table. How many people do you feed in the kingdom? A comfort eight ten men. I'm starting to pay. Yeah, yeah, breakfast. No, I'm better not go to eat. The Bible said they eat from Jezebel's table. If I have a good heart for God to bless you, okay. Let me tell you, kingdom prosperity is connected to a genuine heart. Genuine heart. Genuine heart. The heart must be pure. Stop gossiping, stop by biting, stop talking about people, stop, 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 undermine those who have something you don't have. Amen. Jealousy and enviness. Stop it. Develop a good heart. Don't criticize something God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No, don't. Don't. You do it as a picture for you to see so that you can do great things. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. Thank God for it. And thank God. There are some of you coming as up and coming pastor say, hanging around Porter City will give you a vision. Amen. It will help you to dream. Amen. No, this place is a motivation to pastor so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you become a local champion. Sit in your corner because in the kingdom of the blind, the quarter is always the king. It was not possible for me to do small things because of the exposure God gave to me. One of the number one blessings of God is exposure. One way, I always see two bedroom house and think you have arrived. Status quo, mediocre thinking. And because everybody has a one bedroom house and you have a two, you will become a king. And you are there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Some of you must begin to come here and get a small land and build your two bedroom story building because the time is coming. Eh? You will be here, you won't get a place to sleep. 
And let's do so. I'm telling you. And our 40 days fasting, eh, there are people that will come from nations to this place. You will see it. Watch this. You need hindsight to get insight. You need insight to get foresight. But you need foresight to get oversight. So it gives you advanced knowledge. The ability to sit here and say, mm, something is coming. You see it? I have insights. This is Ghana for you. Hallelujah. The way the prayer is gathering, eh, it will take off. The Lord told me, say, the, the glory of this last house shall be greater than the former. It's another phase of ministry. The pen that was signed on this paper will sign the check that will pay for a land. You will not buy land in credit, you will pay some of them out. Amen. Today, I saw articulators. Wait, they were lining up on the motorway coming from the harbor. And the articulators were such a way that the last one was at the toe boot here. And the first one was at Tetequasi. And they've taken one side of the lane. I said, What is he say? It belongs to somebody who is coming to all night today. Amen. I don't know who the person is, oh, but I saw trailer articulators. I saw it. I'm telling you. Lift up your holy hand. Cabrosio took Ocapaya. <laughs> Do you know why we need this one? There is a society the devil is building. And the society is building such a way that it's going to be a trap to Christians who want to do business. Because they are going to sit on the money such a way that you must join them in their demonic before you get. God is knocking it down this morning. Amen. For the wealth of the sinner will come to the hands of the righteous. Yeah. The secret societies that they are using to trap the children of God in terms of wealth. We need aggressive prayer. If you have to walk in a certain room, it took me years to know that Satan fears my prosperity than my prayer. When you prosper, the devil's kingdom is in a threat. The things you will build, the things you will establish, I'm telling you. I was up in the school and never did the best side away. Take possession of the land. You will need lands. As far as you can see, I've given it to you. He said, I'll give you a land that flow with milk and honey. When you sign your signature, your land will flow with milk and honey. Amen. Now, do you know there's nothing called fertile land? It is when it is a prophetic word that makes the land fertile. Because when Lot lifted his hand, he saw the place that was well watered. He took it, but later became a barren land. But the place that didn't look like a desert, that also became fertile. So when you sign your signature, every land you step will become fertile. Amen. Can I say that number two? Can I give you number two? Every territorial spirit sitting on that land, once you step there, they will vacate the land for you. Amen. You will run away. You need it. Because you can put a factory in a particular place and the factory will not prosper because of dead demonic entities in the land. But today, by this signature, you are driving them away before you Amen. Die. It is called sabotage prayer. Dealing with your enemy before they show their head up. Lord, the future billionaires of the body of Christ, raise them in this room today. Oh, your army doesn't look like you are one of them. Amen. I said the future billionaires of the move of the Lord, raise them in this room today. Amen. The future oil dealers. Kanema tu kapasaya. Redebe katoya. Hina masayi. The future oil dealers in this country. Raise them in this room today. Amen. The biggest transport owner in the nation of Ghana. 
Let them emerge out of this meeting this morning. International contacts. The Lord said, before your investors come, they will not come and look for land. The land will be there for them to develop. Amen. Do you know investors can come the time they come, the land is sitting there. Connections will be there. Hallelujah. Lift up your two hands. I break every force from your background. Amen. Somebody say every force. Every force. Calm down. Calm down. Today, we cancel your name from the poor list. Amen. Permanent cancellation of your name. Amen. Today is a prophetic day. Every firstborn year, take your inheritance. Amen. Every firstborn year, possess your possession. I possess it. Every firstborn year, let the cord of Pelua be tapped permanently. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lift up the pen and pray the Holy Ghost. Listen to this one. Lift up your two hands. Every house has its own foundation. Every household has its own foundation. Every household has its own culture. Every household has its own language. Every household has its own pattern. And every household has its own enemies. Today, whatever is not put in your house by God, Jesus. I'll go to other people here and find yeah, 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 yeah. anything that is we establish your heart that is not by God. Yes. Let it be scattered by fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means that there are some of us sitting here. The foundation of our household is not correct. Today it must be scattered. Hey, anything in your family that says they won't let you own lands and properties. When you put your signature here, they will start dying one by one. Somebody say, Die in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every force. Every force. Every force. Every force. Every force. Every force. Oh, I see this thing. I see this thing. Look at it. It's like a rare estate. Mm. Mm. But there were apartments on like 10 story buildings. The Lord give the project to you. Amen. Amen. Today, destinies will change. Amen. Lift up your two hands and begin to pray. Open your mouth. I <laughs>
God bless you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this message. For further inquiries, contact World Prayer Center, PO Box GP21421, Accra, or telephone plus 233-303-413-703, or plus 233-303-413-705. Email us on info at wpcministries.org, or visit our website at www.wpcministries.org.